возлюбленный Богом Церковь, начиная наше богослужение пред Господом, встанем, пожалуйста, и утвердим обетование, относящееся к предверию нашей надежды, да воцарится воскресение Христова в наших телах. Склоним наши головы в молитве. Дорогой Небесный Отец, во имя Иисуса Христа мы благодарны имени Твоему Святому за вновь представленную привилегию быть на месте всем, которое я очертила десница Твоя для поклонения Святому имени Твоему. И ныне позволь наследию Твоему во имя крови завета подняться на вершины для нас недосягаемые и сокрушить всякое бремя и запинающий нас грех. Да будут прокляты в этом служении, как и прежде, все дела дьявола, болезни, нищета, преждевременная смерть, демоническая зависимость, всевозможные страхи, депрессии, разрушение, косность, невежество – все это – да отступит от шатров святого народа Твоего. И ныне встань, Господи, на место покоя Твоего Ты и ковчег могущества Твоего, и да облекутся святые Твои спасением Твоим, и да возрадуются пред лицом Твоим. Дай нам больше от Духа Твоего, пропитай нас Духом Твоим святым, позволь нам найти светлое лицо Твое. Я представляю это служение в Твои божественные руки. Веди его рукою превознесенную, великий Бог, Отец, Сын, Дух Святой. Аминь. Да благословит вас Господь, можете садиться. Oh, my God. 
And so before we continue to submerge into the inheritance of our hope, our comfort, our strength, our rejoicing, our hope, the unchanging epigraph of the study of the Word of God is Luke 24, 44. Then Jesus said to his disciples, These are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the Law of Moses and the Prophets and the Psalms concerning me. And for us as partakers of the body of Christ, to share with Christ the fulfillment of all that is written about him in Scripture, we shall continue our study of our collaboration with the Holy Spirit and what is necessary to be done from our side so that we can receive the right to the power to put off our former way of life so we put on the new way or form of life. Ephesians 4, 22 through 24, that you put off concerning your former conduct the old man, which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. And to fulfill this command, we need to utilize three charging and fundamental verbs, as we now know. And these are to put off, be renewed, renewed and put on. We've noted that your decision regarding these three destiny impacting questions will determine whether you transform yourself into a vessel of mercy or vessel of wrath, or more specifically, will the completion of your salvation happen that is given to us in the format of a guarantee, or will we lose it and our names be forever blotted out of the book of life, although they may have been written there at one time. In a specific format, we have already looked at the first two questions and have been studying the next question. What conditions are we to fulfill so that by the means of an already renewed mind we begin the process of dressing ourselves into the power of our new person that is created in accordance to God in Christ Jesus in righteousness and holy truth? And linked to clothing ourselves into our new person, we've concluded that we need God's help. That is, we need His mercy because the mercy of God is the great and unique power of God, identifying the essence of God as well as the inheritance prepared for man, born from the seed of the word of truth. The means of receiving any kind of help from God <coughs> or receiving God's mercy is prayer, is the tool of prayer or worship in spirit and in truth, since prayer isn't just how man communicates with God, but also a kind of legal and sacral right that a man gives heaven, a tool that activates the given law or legislation of God. Man gives heaven this right so that heaven may intervene upon the earth, and we can possess this right that activates the given law of God only upon his established conditions, that is, in our dedication to God, our inner state is the same as the inner state or inner essence of God. <clears throat> One of the prayers of David, written in the 143rd Psalm, accurately revealed the conditions upon which a man is called to give God the right to interlope or interject God's mercy into his life. This has been the component of, of our continuing study. <clears throat> 
Psalm 143, 1 and lower. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear, give ear to my supplications. In your faithfulness answer me, and in your righteousness. Do not enter into judgment with your servant, for in your right sight no one living is righteous. For the enemy has persecuted my soul. He has crushed my life to the ground. He has made me dwell in darkness like those who have long been dead. Therefore, my spirit is overwhelmed within me. My heart within me is distressed. I remember the days of old. I meditate on all your works. I muse on the works of your hands. I spread out my hands to you. My soul longs for you like a thirsty land. Answer me speedily, O Lord. My spirit fails. Do not hide your face from me, lest I be like those who go down into the pit. Cause me to hear your loving kindness in the morning, for in you do I trust. Cause me to know the way in which I should walk, for I lift up my soul to you. Deliver me, O Lord, from my enemies. In you I take shelter. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Your spirit is good. Lead me in the land of uprightness. Revive me, O Lord, for your name's sake. For your righteousness' sake, bring my soul out of trouble. In your mercy, cut off my enemies and destroy all those who afflict my soul, for, all, for I am your servant. <coughs> Therefore, to be heard by God, David needed to present to God a basis, a cause, or a particular right that would be able to serve as sufficient evidence before God to intervene into David's life with his faithfulness and his righteousness. And such evidence in this particular prayer, as we already know, were ten arguments that David presented to God, saying, Hear me in your faithfulness and your righteousness. Hear my prayer because I remember the days of old. I meditate on all your works. Hear my prayer because I spread out my hands to you. Hear my prayer for in you do I trust. Hear me because I lift up my soul to you. Hear me because in you I take shelter. Hear me for you are my God. Hear me for your name's sake. Hear me for your righteousness sake. And hear me for I am your servant. <clears throat> In the previous services, we had already studied the nature of the first argument. This was evidence that David abided in faithfulness and righteousness that gave God the lawful right to stand on the side of David in his opposition against his enemies and stop to study the second argument. <clears throat> and this is evidence that David presented in prayer that he abided in the memories of the days of old and all of the deeds that God had done in those days that were also written upon the tablets of his heart. This form of evidence presented in the breastplate of judgment of the high priest, and this is an example of continual remembrance or continual memorial before God, containing the component of continual prayer. And the breastplate of judgment was created and purposed only one item, and this was the urm and the thummim that was present and the presence of which allowed God to hear man and allowed man to hear God. Therefore, to be heard by God in the revelation of his urm, <clears throat> and not run to other so-called prophetic vessels as many of my brothers and sisters do in the Protestant church, <clears throat> but be do, but to be within the revelations of his Urim, it is necessary to keep within your mind the works of God in this is the thummim that God had done in the days of old. You will be able to speak and he will answer you and he will ask you and you will respond to him. Therefore, to be heard by God and answering the second question, what purpose has the breastplate of judgment as a component of continual remembrance within the relationship of redeemed person and God himself, we came to the conclusion that the breastplate of judgment as an item of continual remembrance before God is a sacral symbol of the format of continual prayer, prayer that is not in accordance to the requirements and characteristics of the breastplate of judgment does not have the right to be called prayer, because only the format of continuous prayer presented in the breastplate of judgment of the high priest gives us the right to enter into the holy place as kings and priests of God. We are called to present the interests of the judgments of God in accordance to those commandments and statutes that identify the union of teachings of Jesus Christ that came in the flesh in the twelve precious stones and the twelve names of the sons of Jacob written upon those stones. 
Апостол Павел Апостол Павел spoke of the breastplate of judgment such words, Colossians 4.2, continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. Continuity in prayer, that means 24 hours a day, that completely breaks uh, the uh, image people have in their mind about prayer. People are used to praying specific hours, bending their knees. No one says that you can't do this, but the breastplate of judgment offers the element of continual prayer. When you can wake up and say, when I wake up, I'm still with you. I continue to communicate with you. You teach me and you continue to teach me and I continue to learn from you. I continue to hear you. I continue to carry <coughs> within my heart this urim and this thumbin. Continuity in prayer identifies a joyously burning lamp, identifying the condition of the righteous heart of a man. Proverbs 13.9 The light of the righteous rejoices, but the lamp of the wicked will be put out. The building order of the breastplate of judgment presents and identifies the demands of spirit and in truth that the true worshippers of God need to have whom God seeks. Breaking the order of building the breastplate of judgment, identifying the state and nature of the worshipper of God, will not be able to be called the breastplate of judgment as it loses its nature and purpose. John 4, 23, 24, this is what Jesus said. John writes about this. But the hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father is seeking such to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and in truth. <coughs> the most interesting thing is Jesus didn't speak these words to the apostles and the apostles were not present when he spoke these words. He spoke these words to a Samaritan woman at the well when she asked, where do we pray upon this mountain, uh, Gerizim, that are... Uh, our people have built or in Jerusalem. The Jews did not allow the Samaritans to pray in their temple. They received the God of Israel, but they, the Israelites said, you are not Jews, even though they were circumcised. The scripture said, Moses said, if any person circumcises himself, he will be as a natural Israelite. Being a Jew was not by blood, but by circumcision, by having a covenant with God and not by uh, by physical blood, by gen not by genetics, but by the covenant faith of Abraham. Worshipping the Father in spirit and in truth includes not peddling with the truth when pursuing the goals that God has placed in Scripture, as people have done at all times and many do today, because of their stiff neck, greed, and hypocrisy. We note that in the Septuagint, the Greek translation of the Hebrew Bible, the breastplate of judgment is called the sign of justice, as by the means of the Urim and the Thummim that is contained in the breastplate of judgment God revealed to man his judgments. The symbol of the breastplate of judgment <coughs> is revealed as the conscience of a man. The breastplate of judgment is a symbol of the conscience of a man that is purified from dead works, upon the tablets of whom, just as a sign it, is the teaching of Jesus Christ that came in the flesh written. In this way, the conscience that is purified of dead works with the imprinted faithfulness and righteousness upon its tablets will identify the nature of a true true worshiper and based upon faithfulness and righteousness will give God the right to act through them upon planet earth. It's these kinds of worshipers that the Heavenly Father seeks for himself. When he finds a sufficient amount of people that he needs, he will call them from the earth. <coughs> God has not yet found rest, he's still seeking. He's seeking worshipers that have this breastplate of judgment that would be able to present the element of continual prayer. In a particular format, we have already studied the measurements and the nature of materials from which the breastplate of judgment was supposed to be built that we need to be in accordance to and now have been studying the next requirement. <coughs> Exodus 20:17 through 21. 
And you shall put settings of stone in it, four rows. The first row shall be sardius, topaz, and emerald. Second, turquoise, sapphire, and diamond. Third row, jacinth, agate, and amethyst. And fourth row, beryl, onyx, and jasper. <coughs> they shall be set in gold settings. And the stones shall have the names of the sons of Israel. Twelve according to their names, like the engraving of a signet. Each one with its own name shall be according to the twelve tribes. Exodus 28, 17 through 21. The twelve golden filigree settings of the breastplate of judgment is the living, undamaged, and presented in its original form truth upon the tablets of our heart, identified as the word of God that at one point came out of the mouth of God. Therefore, the twelve golden settings identified the teaching of Jesus Christ that came in the flesh, that we as worshippers of God are called to present in our continual prayer. <coughs> we need to present in our prayer the teaching of Jesus Christ that came in the flesh. The twelve precious stones with engraved upon them as a sign at names of the sons of Israel is a symbol and format of, of our continual prayer, presenting the perfect judgments of God. From this we can see that it wasn't the golden settings being the truth of the word of God that were prepared and adjusted in measurement and configuration to the to the precious stones but the precious stones which are our prayers that were the ones that were adjusted and configured to fit the golden settings of truth <coughs> continual prayer in the twelve precious stones of the breastplate of judgment with the twelve names is a persisting prayer that in its intercession presents the interests of the will of God and does not sway away or step away from the goal we have until we receive what we ask for. The building of the breastplate of judgment contains not just the same measurements and nature of materials, but also the method and means that are called to identify the nature of, of continual prayer, necessary for reaching the goals that God has placed for us to build the kingdom of heaven within our hearts which is also identified as the tree of life. Growing the tree of life within your heart is building yourself up into a new person created in accordance to God in righteousness and holy truth into a spiritual house and holy priesthood. With this we will remember that all the beauty and order of the temple was built for one holy item and for the sake of one holy item and this was the golden ark of the covenant the same thing with the ephod of the high priest with the connected to it breastplate of judgment it was created for and served only one holy item this item very accurately was called to duplicate and fulfill the functions of the golden ark this was the urim and the thummim because the golden ark of the covenant as well as the breastplate of judgment symbolize from different angles and with various purposes the conscience of a man that is cleansed from dead works the urim and the Thummim in Hebrew means light and perfection, light and the right or revelation and truth. <coughs> For example, the Ten Commandments inside the Ark of the Covenant is the truth, and this truth <coughs> upon the breastplate of judgment is the Thummim. The revelation that a person could receive at the mercy seat or the lid of the Ark is the Urim in the breastplate of judgment. Only a person who has a conscience cleansed from dead works or a wise heart upon which the truth in the form of the Thummim is imprinted can be a worshipper of God. <coughs> Therefore, the, re the revelation of God, which is his Urim, can be present only within the boundaries of truth, that is, the boundaries of the commandments of God, that in the heart of a, of a person presents the Thummim. The Thummim presents the teaching of Jesus Christ that came in the flesh, as it is written. Exodus 31, 6, I have put wisdom in the heart of all the gifted artisans, that they may make all that I have commanded you. <coughs> a person that does not have the teaching of Jesus Christ that came in the flesh in their heart, means that he is uh, foolish and unwise and that he is not able to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit will not come into the heart of a foolish person, <coughs> a heart that is not taught the teaching of Jesus Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, go to throughout the world and make them disciples, teach them that make them disciples first. Не делая их учениками, а пытаясь 
I see how they behave with people before they baptize them. They begin to make fun of them, asking them, why do you need this? What does this mean to you? It was always interesting to watch this, and then I asked separately, the one that was asking, but you yourself, do you even understand what, what it's for? And the person asked, well, what? Why are you asking? And I, I see, I ask, I tell him, see, you can't even respond to my question. Well, this is a good conscience, but what are you asking this person about? You're citing the word of Scripture, but you're not explaining it. You don't even know the meaning of it yourself. This is the teaching of Jesus Christ that came in the flesh. What it... No one can explain. They yes, say, yes, it is written, but no one can explain. How do you uh, describe it? <coughs> because it's talking about the quality and friendship of two formats of wisdom that is contained in the Thummim and the Urim and about the fact that carriers of the Urim and the Thummim are true worshippers of God and possess the immune system of the Holy Spirit. Deuteronomy 33, 8 through 11. And of Levi, he said, when we see Levi or any other name, <coughs> calling, uh, a, uh, naming any of the 12 sons of Jacob, we need to know that the essence is not in the name, but the, the meaning that's within that name. Because there was a meaning, and God was basing not from the name of this person, but the meaning of the name. Levi is one who is binded to God, about people who have binded themselves to God by the means of learning. He said, let your Thummim and your Urim be with your Holy One, whom you tested at Massa and with whom you have contended at the waters of Meribah, who says of his father and mother, I have not seen them, nor did he acknowledge his brothers or know his own children, for they have observed your word and kept your covenant. They shall teach Jacob your judgments and Israel your law. They shall be put incense before you and a whole burnt sacrifice on your altars. Bless his substance, Lord, and accept the work of his hand. Strike the loins of those who rise up against him and of those who hate him, that they rise not again. Deuteronomy 33, 8-11 This is inspired by the Holy Spirit prayer of Moses, a person of God. With this we note that the future of men that say of themselves that they belong to the chosen by God nation, however, they confront the carriers of the Thummim and the Urim and hate them because they themselves do not have the, thir uh, the Thummim and the Urim. Their future is the lake of fire burning with fire and brimstone. <coughs> in a specific format, we have already looked at the first five qualities of a warrior in prayer and the first five precious stones of the breastplate of judgment by which God is able to continue continuously reveal his will upon planet Earth and stop to study the sixth quality of the precious diamond stone. We know that the sixth name that was upon the precious stone of the breastplate of judgment of our heart is the name of the sixth son of Jacob, Naphtali, which means wrestler. <coughs> Genesis 37, 8 And Rachel made Bela conceive again and bore Jacob a second son. Then Rachel said, With great wrestlings I have wrestled with my sister, and indeed I have prevailed. So she called his name Naphtali. <coughs> we note that the diamond is a brilliant stone, it is a pure carbon, and so that is why it contains great hardness and resistance. The word brilliant doesn't apply to any other stone except for the brilliant shine and polish of a diamond. <coughs> <coughs> According to the Jewish rabbinate, the name of God we see revealed in the precious diamond stone in Hebrew is El Hai, which when translated means God is alive. I studied not just uh, uh, by the Jewish rabbinate, but in accordance to scripture, that truly this diamond precious stone, this, uh, this diamond stone presents the living God, or El Hai, God who is alive, or living God. Therefore, based on the definition of the name Naphtali, upon the precious diamond stone, we can conclude the function of the sixth principle identifying the nature of continual prayer with which we need to be a continual memorial before God is our ability to allow the Holy Spirit to abide with us in our prayer battles against the powers of hell which confront us when we 
fulfill the will of God by the name of the living God. But the Lord is the true God. He is the living God and the everlasting King. At His wrath, the earth will tremble and the nations will not be able to endure His indignation. Jeremiah 10.10 10. The name of the living God was a format of an oath and the category of the nation that had not learned to swear by the living God or swore falsely, unlawfully, were completely and utterly destroyed. Jeremiah 12, 16, 17 And it shall be it, my children, my nation, will learn carefully the ways of my people to swear by my name as the Lord lives, as they taught my people to swear by Baal, then they shall be established in the midst of my people. But if they do not obey, I will utterly pluck up the, and destroy that nation, says the Lord. Therefore, to not be completely eradicated and, and eliminated by the wrath of the living God, it is necessary to learn the ways of the nation of God to swear by the name of God else high or by the living God. And these ways are the paths of the commandments and statutes of, the, of God. The condition that gives us the right to learn the ways or paths of God, or God's commandments and statutes to swear by the name of the living God, is to thirst to know them. <clears throat> God will never give anything to anyone if this person does not thirst and pay the appropriate price. I will run the course of your commandments, for you shall enlarge my heart. Teach me, O Lord, the ways of your statutes, and I shall keep it to the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep your law. Indeed, I shall observe it with my whole heart. Make me walk in the paths of your commandments, for I delight in it. Psalm 119, 32 through 35. <clears throat> In Hebrew, the living God, talking about him, how he is, he is alive or living, he is one who is abiding, one who is with unconditional authority, defining Genesis, creating a Genesis, keeping a Genesis, holding a Genesis, ruling over a Genesis, and commander and Lord of Genesis. You shall fear the Lord your God, you shall serve him, and to him you shall hold, hold fast and take oath in his name. He is your praise, and He is your God, who has done for you these great and awesome things which your eyes have seen. Deuteronomy 10:20 20 and 21. The result of swearing by the name of the living God was always the fulfillment of the promise of God for the sake of which the oath was made. The power of a warrior in prayer contained within the quality of the name of the living God is called to present the unlimited power of God over Genesis allotted by him for us time and boundaries. This is why it was necessary for us to determine what goal does God have in his intentions when he urges and calls his children to become warriors in prayer so that they would be able to be in accordance to the breastplate of judgment and in what way and upon what conditions is God able and desires to give man the right to become a warrior in prayer so that man may present the interests of God and implement or actualize his inheritance in God. Per the definitions provided in scripture to be a warrior in prayer is the lawful and privileged inheritance of holy men of all days. Secondly, this is their primary or first most purpose that is revealed in their calling to trample upon uncleanness and the unclean in their prayer battles. This is one of the greatest positions that is gifted by God to man, in which a person becomes a king and a priest to God and is seen by God as a brilliant stone or the diamond stone with the name of Naphtali. A warrior in, pr in prayer is a king and a priest, not being a king and a priest to God in the virtue of which a person is able to reign with his informational organ over his emotional organ. It is impossible to be a warrior in prayer. <clears throat> we note that the prayer the prayer of a warrior in prayer is a sacral or holy mystery that has an unearthly genesis therefore is inaccessible to the comprehension of the human mind or with human abilities. We more than once note that by its nature the genesis of prayer is the genesis of God. Therefore the genesis of prayer as well as the genesis of God does not have a beginning and does not have an end. Prayer has always been a mystery of God himself because it has always existed in his presence as his golden scepter of favor that he stretched forth to the one that would seek his face in performing his will. And the first one that he always stretched out his rod to was his son, 
and the Holy Spirit that fulfilled his will. If, however, anyone dared to come to him upon his own conditions, not being called into his presence, then God's golden scepter of favor was not stretched out to the ones asking and resulted in this person's prayer being unheard by God. Now we know that God does not hear sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, he hears him. John, John 931. 931. In accordance to this place of scripture, God becomes the initiator of a prayer in the situation that a warrior in prayer is the in the virtue of his worshiper, begins, in, begins to pray in accordance to his will. Because the right to come close to and be forthcoming before God in prayer is the exclusive prerogative of God. Not, no one will be able to or will dare by himself to come close to and enter into God that desires to abide in darkness or mystery or in the unapproachable light. Jeremiah 30, 21 through 22. Their nobles shall be from among them, and their governor shall come from their midst. Then I will cause him to draw near, and he shall approach me. For who is this who pledged his heart to approach me? Says the Lord, you shall be my people, and I will be your God. Jeremiah 30, 21, 22. In accordance to this prophetic revelation, we can see that coming near to and entering into God is the task of one governor that will come from the nation seed of Abraham, is an, uh, and this is his only son, in the status of the son of man, by whom and in whom any born from God and seeking God can come near to and enter into God. This is why from all of the existing forms of service, continual prayer, leading a person into the presence of God is the most difficult form of service that most Christianity, for the most part, avoids, forsakes, and refuses. This charge I commit to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you may wage the good warfare. 1 Timothy 1.18 To define and build a clear and orderly for us system that will help us understand the nature of continual prayer in the signs identifying the, a warrior in prayer that would be able to be based on specific commandments of God, giving man the lawful right to swear by the name of the living God, Based upon the revelations written in Scripture, our prayer in the quality of a warrior in prayer, identified by the virtues of the diamond, needs to be, first of all, continual, second, persistent, third, diligent, with boldness, with reverence, with revealing or expressing the faith of your heart, with thanksgiving, with joy, in the fear of the Lord, in the Holy Spirit, or praying in tongues. We need to note that each of the ten listed righteous qualities are present in each other, come from one the other, strengthen one the other, complete one the other, and identify the truthfulness of one the other. In other words, each of the ten listed qualities are existing in balance and in each of the other nine. Therefore, the truthfulness of each of the qualities is determined by the presence of the other quality, that together united make up a wonderful balance. Nevertheless, nevertheless, each of the ten qualities has its own face, its unrepeated and inherent only to it taste, color, odor, and character of behavior, and as a result has its own exclusive and specific application and its own specific purpose. In a specific format, we have already looked at the signs of the five first qualities included in the nature of a prayer, as well as the state of a warrior in prayer identifying the atmosphere of his heart, and stop to study the sixth quality within the nature of the warrior in prayer, and this is faith. We note that in Scripture, the character and virtue included in the word faith is described in, in prayer as a command and a, a military command, not fulfilling this command at the time of war where the organized powers of hell confront us will be a final separation from God that is equal to the second death. Faith as a quality and atmosphere of a born spirit also <clears throat> belongs to the state of the one who is praying that is called to be present in anything that a person does with diligence and from the soul. Continual prayer that is something that comes from not from the earth as although it is in in the present time it 
governs time and is above or beyond the time. To better understand the element of faith, we took four aspects to identify the essence and quality of faith and to see the necessity of its presence within our relationship with God, defining the essence and purpose of faith, the price for obtaining faith, keeping and developing faith, and the fruits and the rewards for the fruit of faith. But first I will bring forth antonyms or the opposite qualities of the components that we have been studying. When you understand the opposites of it, then you begin to un clearly understand the qualities that we're studying. Continual, the opposite of, conti of con uh, continual prayer is unfaithfulness and incontinuation. The opposite of persistent is resistance. The opposite of diligence is laziness. The opposite of boldness is audacity. The opposite of reverence is forsaking or hatred. And and the opposite of the faith of God is in belief and resistance to the faith of God. Psalm 50, 16, 17, but the, to the wicked, God says, what right have you to declare my statutes or take my covenants in your mouth, seeing you hate instruction and cast my words behind you? And so the sixth sign of a warrior in prayer, identifying the diamond stone with the name of Neftali is the faith of a warrior in prayer that is based upon hearing the word of God that comes out of the mouth of God through his delegated people that have the power that came from the Holy Spirit to be God's mouth. Second Chronicles 36, 15 through 15 through 21. And the Lord God of their fathers sent warnings to them by his messengers, rising up early and sending them, because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of God, despised his words, and scoffed at his prophets until the wrath of the Lord arose against his people, till there was no remedy. Therefore he brought against them the king of the Chaldeans, who killed their young men with the sword in the house of their sanctuary and had no compassion on young men or virgins. Today the Chaldeans are false charismatic uh, uh, peep, uh, those uh, churches. They run around shouting, saying, this is the truth of God, this is that Chaldean king. God uh, allowed <laughs> these people to be in, in, come, enter into the hands of the religious. Uh, one lady said uh, she was trying to find a church uh, in one place and she went in and, and a, a pastor got up and said uh, to stand up and for a half hour we will shout that we are saved. And so they've been already given into the hands of the Chaldean king. They don't understand. Why are you going to shout uh, that you're saved for half an hour if you're already saved? I'll stand on my knees and thank God that I am saved. I'm going to glorify him. Who do I need to prove uh, to that I am saved? You don't need to prove to the sun that it shines. It just rises and shines. But when people say, let us do this, let us prove this, let us confess this, that I'm saved, they're not going to be saved that way. Salvation comes from hearing the word of God and obedience to the word that you hear. This obedience and had no compassion on young men or virgin on the aged or the weak he gave them all into this hands and all the articles from the house of God great and small the treasuries of the house of the Lord and the treasuries of the king of his leaders and those he took to Babylon Babylon is a mixture of things of God and man then they burned the house of God broke down the walls of Jerusalem burned all its palaces with fire and destroyed all his precious possessions and those who escaped from the sword he carried away to Babylon where they became servants to him and his sons until the rule of the kingdom of Persia, to fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah until the land had enjoyed her Sabbaths. As long as she lay desolate, she kept, sa she kept Sabbath to fulfill 70 years. <laughs> Defining the essence and purpose that is included in the word faith, as we see further, as in the, uh, the rest of the components, is directly linked to our obedience to the will of God. The absence of faith in prayer is seen as, as in Scripture as a hard heart, disobedience to the will of God that is identified as a specific resistance to God. And so looking at the first question, what is the essence and purpose of the faith of a warrior in prayer, <clears throat> we uh, brought forth a meaningful place of scripture that uh, is an example of 
faith or is the cornerstone of faith. For assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he will he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Mark 11:23. <clears throat> Linked to this command, we need to always remember that we can and are called to remove with faith, with our faith, only those mountains that are in our way of fulfilling the will of God, that are within our personal responsibility. The key word or phrase here is have faith in God. The scriptures, when it talks about the faith of God, have many uh, semantics, many meanings, and are literally taken from the format of a military lexicon. And this is not something as an alternative to something else, but as a command of a captain. And so the command to have the faith of God is an unchanging command. Without, If not obedient to, you will not be able to fulfill God's will. And this needs to be received by us as a necessity. Without faith, it is impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Hebrews 11. Six. And so the necessity to trust in God and His Word and to seek God in His Word in your spirit from one side is the collaboration of our faith from with the faith of God and the other side is uh, pleasing God. It's it, very interesting that the phrase to have faith in God in Hebrew to have the faith have faith in God means have among you a list of the characteristics of the faith of God. <coughs> How, the, how this faith is, or what is it like, this faith of God? Have among you a list of the characteristics of the faith of God. Rewrite the scroll of perspectives of the faith of God upon your heart. Always attend to the meaning of the faith of God. Reason about her consistency or what it contains. Focus your attention upon her. Speak or describe her benefits or advantages. Reveal her in your works and deeds. Be vigilant and stand guard of her interests. Keep her as the apple of your eye. Love her essence. Submit yourself to her commands. Tremble before her great greatness. Reveal in her presence. Be bold with her in your prayer. Govern with her upon the right of possession of property. Possess her in her wholeness. Pay the price. Pay the price for learning to know her, spend the time to possess her, practice her in all aspects of your life, develop her to impact upon all aspects of your life, eat her or consume her as the bread of life, and drink her as the water of life, express patience when waiting for her revelations, make the personal decision to walk in her paths or her ways, prepare yourself to fulfill her commands without deviations, strive to go forward to her honor and her callings, spend the energy to possess her as your personal inheritance, be be bold for, for her right to be ruler of your life. Never turn your back to her commandments. You can always continue this. The, when I went into looking at all of these, the definition, they just start pouring out and all of them are, are in accordance to scripture, considering these multifunctional and multi-meaning uh, list of definitions that are uh, with uh, link to the command of having the faith of God, we need to firstly always remember or renew in our mind the knowledge you have about faith to prompt your clear thinking and hold or keep it in its its state in continual activeness. Second, anchor, deepen, widen, and utilize this knowledge in your walk in the faith in your faith of God. For this reason, in a specific format, we have already looked at some of the definitions and purposes of the faith of God. And before we pay our attention to study the definitions and purposes of our faith called to collaborate with the faith of God, I shortly will remind us of the essence of what we have already studied, the definitions and purposes of the faith of God. First, we note that the faith of God in the virtue of the Urim and the Thummim that is identified as the word of God that comes out of the mouth of God is the essence of God himself, covered from surrounding eyes, that by the will of God is contained in three places, in the entrails of God, in the treasury of the Holy Scriptures, and in the heart of a person in the likeness of God. <coughs> The treasury of the scriptures is always uh, tightly knit with God himself, and so we need to look at scripture as the personified God himself, because the scripture and the, his word and, and him are the same. 
And so we will see the nature, what nature, the nature that God possesses, the same nature his word will have. The faith identified as the word of God is one of the names of God, that he, the faith of God as God himself identifies his, uh, God's faithfulness to his word. This is a commanding informational program that identifies the essence of God that is expressed and revealed in his spoken word that he has established in heaven forever, that is for eternity. Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven, Psalm 119.89. <clears throat> we note that settled in heaven word his faith God has desired to cover in three places uh, his truth in the depths of his entrails in the mystery of the treasury of the holy scriptures and in the heart of a man that loves to revere before his name at one point a, 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 a a word that is spoken by God becomes a law of God and it is a law for God himself that he follows from what he depends and that he follows. Psalm 138.2 For you have magnified your word above all your name. Psalm 138.2 The faith of God in virtue of the word of God first becomes an eternal and unchanging law for God himself to which all the names of God are submitted. The faith of God covered within itself the highest or greatest virtue of God himself, that is identified as the virtue of a servant. When the word of God comes out of the mouth of God, uh, falls into a conscious and willing dependence of the word he spoke and becomes uh, uh, a servant of his word. The faith of God expressed and spoken uh, by God is the wreath and crown of all the names of God. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Romans 10, 17, the faith of God is the genetic program of God that is expressed from his mouth supernatural word. The faith of God and the virtue of the word of God that comes out of his mouth is the absolute truth of God. Of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruit of his creatures. James 1.18. The faith of God <coughs> in the virtue of the word of God that comes out of his mouth is the imperishable seed of the word of God called to fertilize and inculate the kingdom of heaven within the heart of a man. Luke 8.11. The seed is the word of God. The faith of God in the virtue of the word of God that comes out of the mouth of God is a phenomenon of the transcendent sovereignty of God identifying the character of holiness in God himself. Genesis 1.26, Then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the whole earth. <coughs> God creates a sovereign person. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. Revelation 3.20 God does not enter in. He waits until the person will open himself. He can knock, and he knocks only into that door that has the latch. And the latch is the ability to present yourself as a living sacrifice to God. By this he will knock and stretch out his hand. If a person has not presented himself as a living sacrifice acceptable to God, then God will never be able, never walk, uh, knock to you, but the spirit of deception will knock that will present itself as the Holy Spirit. These people will continually walk around saying, God has revealed to me, but when you look, uh, this person has not presented his body as a living sacrifice. Today I know many people that stand ahead of, of large movements, Christian <coughs> and Protestant churches that say openly that they're friends of God. That's why they can have six or seven lovers. They are in uh, fornication and they consider themselves uh, uh, they call themselves children, uh, men of God. And I'm not going to list their names. Isaiah 62, 1, For Zion's sake I will not hold my peace, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest until her righteousness goes forth as a brightness, and her salvation as a lamp but that burns. Six, the faith of God and the virtues of the word of God that comes out of the mouth of God is the undiminishing treasure of God placed upon our account or lot in the format of inheritance that is contained in the work of the redemption of God. James 2.5 Listen, my beloved brethren, has God not chosen the poor of this world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he promised to those who love him? 
7. The faith of God in the virtue of the, of the word of God that comes out of the mouth of God is the eternal, unsearchable, uncountable, omnipotent, and inexhaustible energy potential of God. Isaiah 40, 26. Lift up your eyes on high and see who has created these things, who brings out their host in numbers and calls them all by name. By the greatness of his might and the strength of his, in, his power, not one is missing. Now we will turn to study the essence and purpose of our faith that is called to collaborate with the faith of God upon specific conditions of Scripture, where God and man are called to fulfill strict belonging to them roles. We need to immediately note that the abilities and perspectives of the faith of man as the abilities and per perspectives of the faith of God are presented in seven components called to collaborate with the faith of God due to which we will be then prepared to subdue kingdoms, work righteousness, obtain promises, stop the mouth of lions, quench the violence of fire, escape the edge of the sword, out of the weakness be made strong, be valiant in, in battle, turn to flight the, the armies of aliens receive you your dead raised to life again experience torture also chains and imprisonment get stoned being sawed in two being tempted being slain with the sword wander about in the sheepskins and goatskins being destute afflicted and tormented wander in deserts and mountains in dens and caves of the earth hebrews 11 through 38 this will help us this is where we uh, receive these. First, our faith is a unique program system identified as a genetic organ capable of reading all information, carry it in yourself, and pass it on to others. Second, our faith as a gatherer and carrier of information is, a, is our sovereignty identifying our essence. We will study all these definitions. I'm just listing them for now. Our faith is the willing obedience to the information we receive together with the work of our wise and willing choice with the following decision. Our faith is a unique saturator or diluter of received by us information, identifying the atmosphere of our spirit. Fifth, our faith is in a specific obstacles or situations to carry and produce the seed of information is our quality or our egg with the ability to be conceived by the seed. This is our great eternal an energy, a potential that does not diminish. And now let's look at the first sign and, perp and definition of our faith. People have problems. Why? Because they aren't able to differentiate God's faith from their own faith. And not a single book will explain this to you. I looked at all the books and I have not found it yet. And so I would like for you to turn to this with seriousness and learn it very well. Our faith is a unique program system identified as a genetical organ that is able to read information carry it and, and pass it on to others. Genesis 18, 19, For I have known him in order that he may command his children and his household after him that they keep the way of the Lord to do righteousness and justice that the Lord may bring to Abraham what he has spoken to him. God has chosen him so that he may carry it in himself. He read the faith of God, everything that he told him, and then he needed to pass it on to his household. He received it, and he was conceived. He grew the kingdom of heaven in himself, and then he began to confess, pass it on to his sons. And so from this promise given to Abraham in the inheritance of faith, we see that God had chose Abraham to be a presenter of his faith in the format of his commandments that identify the paths of the Lord for his sons and for his house after himself. Considering that faith is a program of God in the virtue of the commandments of God, that we as a programmable system of God are called to show in our faith is the leading light for the world. We as a program system of God are called to be carriers and presenters of his light. The faith of God in us is his light. To show your faith is to show light. You are the light of the world. 
A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Matthew 5, 14 through 16. <laughs> this place of scripture is directly linked to the place of scripture show in your faith virtue and virtue, virtue knowledge and knowledge self-control and self-control perseverance and so and so forth these are the faith these are the life uh, the light first Thessalonians 5 3 through 10 for when they say peace and safety then suddenly destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman and they shall not escape but you brethren are not in darkness so that this day should overtake you as a thief you are all sons of light and sons of day carriers of the faith of God that collaborate their faith with the faith of God or obey the commandments of God are sons of light and sons of day. We are not of the night nor of the darkness, therefore let us not sleep as others, but let us watch and be sober for those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But let us be we who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet of the hope of salvation. When it talks about sons of day, this is the seventh day, the eternal day, because the first days in the Bible that we see the first six days, there was an evening and morning but the seventh day does not have an evening this is the eternal day the Sabbath uh, the symbol of uh, the Sabbath the peace of the Sabbath your sons of the seventh day the eternal day it's talking about this day this kind of this is what it's talking about that we need to be dressed into this virtue of the seventh day this is that breastplate of faith and love as a helmet of the hope of salvation for God did not appoint us to wrath but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ who died for us that whether we wake or sleep we should live together with him First Timothy 14 for Thessalonians 5, 3 through 10. Our faith is our sovereignty that identifies ourselves. And God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. When God spoke these words, he showed that now he will not be able to function on earth without the permission of man. Just as God reigns on the earth, on, in heaven, just as God reigns in heaven, he, he uh, gave power to man uh, to rule on the earth, the authority of, uh, to men to rule on the earth. And now he needs to collaborate with men when he wants to do anything on the earth. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he, Proverbs 23, 7. You see that the thoughts in the heart of a man identify his nature, and these thoughts are the faith of a person. Faith is information, a program that is within a person. Third, our faith is our willing decision to follow. Deuteronomy 30, 19. I call heaven and earth as witness today against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live. Let us pay attention to what our faith consists of. This is not feelings, because all people say, I feel. What is faith? I hear many people say, even hierarchies, uh, famous people, they say, what is faith? Uh, it's difficult to explain. This is an un a controllable feeling a person explains suddenly I felt that right now I'm gonna say it and it's gonna be and I said it and it happened and he's always thinking that what he felt and said it and it happened and he doesn't know that this was the, not the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit never works through your feelings he works through information and information that you need to clearly check uh, seven times, measure it off, and then begin to confess. 
you need to be well convinced that what you're fi confessing is correct. If it's not in accordance to uh, the truth and you're vowing in vain, then you will be destroyed among God's people. Many people begin to confess the promises of God, not having the right to do so. They think that everything that is written here, they have the right to confess it as their own. They open it and say, I take it by faith. What faith are you taking it with? Faith is a revelation that comes from the word of God, from the preached word, only from the preached word. Faith is by hearing. You need for a person to hear and not read. One reads and many listen. Blessed is the reader as one person reading and those who listen. The one who reads and one who fulfills. When I read, God gave me the privilege not because I had obtained this position or I don't know why he chose me. I, I have searched much. Lord, you chose the wrong person. I thought... I valued, my, I valued myself differently, and I always ask God, maybe you should choose somebody who's stronger, maybe one who's more goal-oriented, but when God chooses, he chooses a, prophet, a young person, inexperienced, and that one says, I'm a shepherd, I only tended flocks, who's going to listen to me? And he says, don't say this, I will make your mouth stronger than theirs. And when I said this in the church, one elderly sister came to me and said, Pastor, I love you so much, but why are you saying this? Because you're... That your forehead will be stronger than theirs, as it's in scripture. But the, she said that their religious uh, sects and other churches may may be uh, unhappy that you said this. But no one has really confronted me when I said these things. Я буду говорить, а ты мне скажи, что это не так. А я тебе скажу, все, что ты говоришь, это ложь, ты обманываешь людей. And so those uh, theologians can't tell you when you're saying something wrong or right, but I can say what's wrong or right. When you're going to evangelize and God called you to this, and so uh, when they call people and tell them to do things as a as so-called evangelism or something else and then ask them how many they brought to God. And so people think that uh, the more souls they bring that this is the way to, to heaven. I call heaven and earth as witness today against you that I have set before you life and death. Practically, our faith is given the option to choose life or death because our faith can conceive life or death. It can conceive whatever. And this is very important. Our faith is a unique saturator of information that we receive in the atmosphere of our spirit. For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them, but the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. It's interesting. A mixer, you think, like as as the the as you mix paints or make a color that you need to paint with, but and so the word that is heard is the commandment of God, is the word of God that God has given to His delegated people, said that so that we may hear it when they will preach, and when they preach, did not give profit those who heard. Why? Because they did not mix it with faith. They did not obey the with their faith. To 
to mix is to incline your ear to be humble to receive it. And to receive it, you need to receive the delegated a, a person of God. And they don't want to accept the delegated person of God. They don't want to admit that the person that is preaching is one who is sent by God. They say we are all sent and we're all the same. And there's not someone or someone here. But God says, yes, we're all the same. But each of us have different callings, different purposes. And he uses us differently. And so each one needs to use that gift that has been opened to them. I use the gift that God gave me. You need to use your gift. Receive the word. They did not want to mix it with their faith, and here's the result. They did not, it did not profit them. Our faith can mix anything, can dilute anything, any words. Faith, faith, our faith in specific situations is a carrier and a producer of the seed of information from the from your words you will be justified and by your words you will be condemned in the beginning we receive we mix with our faith and then we confess when we confess the faith then it passes on to a different level it becomes the seed in our mouth we were as the egg there as a painter, we, the paint, and God is a painter, but when we began to confess it, it bega became a seed in our mouth. And the angel said to her, you will bear a son, and she said, may it be in accordance to your word. And when she said, may it be in accordance to your word, uh, it was the time when she conceived a son in her womb. And so she, in your mind, you need to uh, say, when you hear the word, I agree, I agree with these words, it is, these are my mine. And you immediately need to transform this word that you heard into seed. Confess it for yourself because you will be justified by the word, your words and condemned from your confessions, from the faith of your heart. You receive it there and say, this is mine. I receive my justification. To receive justification, you need to hear the teaching of justification. When a person doesn't know justification is, and someone says, you're justified. Brothers and sisters, you need to know that God has justified you freely. Just read the place of Scripture, receive justification freely by grace. Do you understand this, brothers and sisters? Receive this justification freely, amen, and confess it. You, you need to teach. These may be just ti uh, slogans or titles that you're confessing, but if you don't explain what is justification and how to accept it, then a person will still speak, but he'll still be doing his own work, his own evangelism, his own good work that he will consider as righteousness because he doesn't know what justification is. And we more than once talked about this. Sixth, our faith is the quality of the egg that is able to be conceived with any seed of information. Luke 1, 30 through 38. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will, be con you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. She he heard the word from the angel Gabriel. He will be great and will be called the son of the highest. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. It's always amazing. Uh, it always amaz amazes me this young woman who is about 14, 15 years old can say that she's the servant of the Lord. And so it's possible being just a young girl or boy to say that you're a servant of the Lord, to have this quality, to love the Lord so much, to love his word so much, to love his commandments to be his, become his servant. It's possible. Some think that you need to live a long time and be of age. As soon as you've so seen and fell in love, you become a servant of God. Seventh, our faith is the eternal ener energy potential 
that is not able to diminish. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved, Romans 10, 9. And so we confess what? We confess eternal salvation, but we confess it as the faith of our heart. It is already there. This is the teaching of Jesus Christ that presents eternal salvation or the kingdom of heaven within us. We confess the Thummim. And when we confess the Thummim, then immediately the Urim comes that confirms this. Proverbs 18.4, the word of a man's mouth are deep waters. The wellspring of wisdom is a flowing brook. And so what a person says are deep waters. In the original, it means these are waters that are not possible to be measured. And so this is, these, this is the potential, and to better understand the perspectives and potential of our faith, we need to remember that the universal and unique ability of our faith depends from a couple of things. First, to mix your faith with your faith, you can, the words of God, you can mix with your faith either the words of God or anything else. You can mix with your faith these are other words as when our faith upon specific conditions is receiving or accepting these things. Our faith cannot at the same time mix two words coming from two different springs. It can't <coughs> mix the word that comes from the mouth of the delegated from God and then go and hear from another as well and <coughs> mix that as well. You, when you hear from the other, that information that you received previously, people who run from one preacher to another or listen to all preachers at once, they will never have the faith of God. Why? Because if you pay attention, one says one and one says another. And so, we were speaking the word uh, in one church or preaching the word. One brother was sitting in front of me and he completely... I pretty much discredited everything he was saying. The servant of this church uh, said, it's interesting when this brother spoke, it's as if everything was good. When you began to speak, I was also agreeing with everything you were saying as well, as if everything was correct. But I said, but we were speaking of completely two opposite things. But you see it good here and there. You see, if, that one, if this man sees both as good, if a person listens, one woman stood up and said, I'm leaving the church because you said to listen to only you. I said, don't listen to Jess me I said listen to the person that God has appointed to you and directed you to that's the one you listen to pray <coughs> and ask God who to listen to if you listen if you listen to everyone you will uh, you will dirty your spring one brother said, I don't agree that I'm casting my legs to anybody who passes by when I listen to all. You may not agree, but this is what the scriptures say. It's not something I said. This is what God had written in scripture about Israel that listened to everyone at once. It's, it, they come from Damascus and Egypt, and they, the Israelites started doing those things too, as they others. And so you were as a, as a uh, prostitute who cast her legs uh, to anyone who uh, uh, anyone who would pass by in the street or on the road, and that's what God talked about. But he said, I don't understand it this way. But it's written in Scripture this way. When I preached and wrote it, read it directly from the Scripture, the kingdom of heaven is not for the drunkards and people ran. To the other pastor, at the, their pastor, and he uh, and said, I, we caught him on a lie uh, where it says drunkards and fornicators are going to hell together. But they, he, the other pastor said, why is he telling, telling the untruth? This is written in scripture this way directly. 
but that one, those told him, but this is not how we understand. And when they don't understand this way, that means that they're saying that this place of scripture, it needs to be not understood the way it's written in the Bible. That means you can be a fornicator, you can be a drunkard and love everyone at once, <coughs> preach a tolerant love to everyone, with the exception of us, of course. Pay attention not for, to us. <coughs> but I say, then why do you preach <coughs> to love for all, including lesbians and gays, but not to us? You see, they leave. They can't take it. They leave, and then suddenly they go there and say, oh, we love everybody. I love you, how we miss you. You hear how it says of a demon speaking. Why is it that you, the unclean left, if you, when you love, you don't do the things that you did, but you did that. And so it's very important to understand that we are not able to mix the words that come from two different springs. When you hear one person and listen the other, we, it will eliminate what you heard previously. When we look at one information, the unseen information, and then look at another, then it, what does it do? It blots out the information you previously received. <coughs> and you will not be able to write within your heart. You need to determine once and for all, uh, Lord, show me the person whom I need to go to and who I need to listen, to listen to just one person. That doesn't mean all the rest are not telling the truth. But God wants you to know your church. This is going to be your church. And you can... Lee, you can, you can maybe uh, go on vacation or something, but the church will still be present in your heart. If you abandon the church that where you grew in, in faith and you go to a different uh, church of, that has a uh, completely different teaching that actually starts teaching that you can drink a little bit and that you can actually, you're permitted to do a lot of other sins that, and you need to have a de democratic system within the church structure and people need to be voted for today one, tomorrow another and they vote I know a lot of Pentecostal churches where they vote for pastor every year and he has a good command behind him that uh, when they have someone they can control so, and some they vote every four years, five years to how just as presidents are elected uh, these people are elected <coughs> and these democratic instruments uh, already shows that this is a synagogue of Satan is not, doesn't have the right to be called a church and so pay attention from what spring you're, you're being nourished from springs or a spring our faith will not be able to mix information from two different springs any word that we uh, consider and, and accept takes status lawful status of power within us and they we become servants of it and they become the faith of our heart <coughs> let us remember this any word that we uh, consider and we like we hear something and we like what we're hearing we understand this is wrong but we like it this what you like is very dangerous it's very dangerous why did Eve sin did she not know that this was sin she knew it but she liked it she, she liked what she saw. Why did Ahan take what it was accursed? He says, I liked it. I saw the golden uh, uh, tablet. I saw the... I saw the garments and this was a very uh, unique and I liked it and of course he was stoned. They eliminated this person from the, uh, from the congregation. It was very important that the words that we uh, accept, we can love and hate because when you uh, give consideration to, it's not emotions, feeling and body. The, the mortal body the itself, it can like something, but your informational organ needs to rule over your emotional organ and you say, no, this will not be. 
love is in the wise and willing decision. You say, I will not go. I will not do this. No. And when you say this, no, then you give, uh, then you give priority to the truth and you confront the uh, sin and then uh, it becomes the faith of your heart. You can confess and say, I will not. But if you did fall, you, you had sinned, a righteous may fall seven times, but he will rise again. We have a Jesus Christ who is our um, uh, intercessor for us. We hate the sin within our spirit. It's not enough that our mortal body wants this, but we fight with this mortal body within ourselves. And so our spiritual person is completely different. I want us to correctly understand that any word that we uh, give priority to has legal status over us and we become servants of those words and they in turn become the faith of our heart. Fifth, the words that become the faith of our heart possess us so much or take over ourselves that can change and blot out the program of our genetical code, either for blessing or for cursing us. When you love the commandments of the Lord and begin to confess them and look at them and live by them, then they will blot out the other program which you had received previously from your, from the sinful life of our fathers. Sixth faith of our heart can be revealed and collaborate with any kinds of words when utilizing the aspect of our tongue or our confessions. Uh, confessing and realizing our faith with the one or other words will depend on the right place and choice of the right place and the, ch and the choice of the right time. If Daniel would have begun to pray earlier than the finishing of the 70 years uh, for the people to be freed from slavery, God said through Jeremiah, 70 years you will be in bondage. Daniel did not pray 70 years. He, he, he mourned, but when he calculated that 70 years was over, imagine how, how old he was. He was probably very, very young at the time. And so we don't know if Daniel was older or younger than the other three men that were with him. He was probably about 100 years old even when he was praying or even after. I know that the theologians speak of him. He was a great uh, man of age. He was very old and how much strength this older man had. He practically was, he was very old already and he, at the court, he was in the courts of the king. He was so powerful that he was second after the king. And uh, the other three men with him ruled over the entire uh, Babylon Empire, Bogdan Jews had ruled Daniel, over Babylon. Ahead of them was uh, Daniel. And so they also put all the captains as were Jews. It was the same in Egypt. So you understand just the same as when Rome came to power and captured the Jews uh, after some time and so being servants it will be this way they were telling him that you need to uh, accept the things that are to happen or else uh, there will not be bread and so they took the control of the entire economic system and so people will destroy themselves if they do, will not obey Rome same thing in any place. Just disconnect the electricity. In three days, you will find uh, uh, many dead people even. And emperors understood that if we don't do something that they demand, uh, we know it will happen. And so the right place, the right place is being a part of the body of Christ, the right time is to know that the promise that you're asking for, the time has come for you to receive it. In this way, these seven components are identifying factors or identifiers of our faith. Uh, when we collaborate with the words of God or any other words that come from anyone else, 
The ability to collaborate our faith with the faith of God is the ability to collaborate with God himself and to call upon God. The condition of collaborating with the faith of God is thirst and the readiness to immediately fulfill the revelation that you hear. If a person does not possess such a, a state and such an inner decision of, and has the thirst uh, for the revelation of the Urim and the thirst to fulfill immediately fulfill the revelation of the Urim, then their heart will be closed to understanding the word with which God wants to heal you. The condition necessary for hearing and, and listening to God and to be able to hear God and have God hear you the faith of God is are these golden uh, filigree settings our faith is obedience to the faith of God these are the precious stones of the breastplate of judgment that are uh, adjusted to fit these settings and so the faith of man is a sovereign right of a person to choose and that form of thinking that this person uh, places as first in his list of priorities. And so the thoughts that occupy our mind and that are a priority in our mind is our hope, our confession, our faith, our obedience, and our God as well. And so it did not profit them again not being mixed with faith in those who heard it, Hebrews 4.2. And so collaborating with our faith with the faith of God, and so our faith, and so the Lord's faith is uh, the word that he speaks, our faith is obedience to that word that is heard and expressing it in our life and our actions. Amen. Let us pray. Uh, let us thank God for that mass amount of information and collaborating our faith with the faith of God, which we are able to hear today. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for that word that we were able to receive before you upon this holy place that you have given so that here we can worship and meet with you where you could teach us this these are the this is a holy place where the enemy more than once tried to destroy but you have left it with us in all of the situations you had led us through and we thank you that you still are here and this place is still belongs to you and us in accordance to your words may your mercy be blessed in your word for your holy people that today heard and those holy people that will hear this word i pray about all those who will hear it so that it enter into their heart and become their faith become their hope and become their trust and their light that be their power that they, with which they would be able to destroy all of the foundations of hell so that they would be able to uh, quench all the darts of the wicked one, would be able to stand upon all the evil and would be able to be healed, would be able to receive their dead returned would be able to escape the sword and even if you'll need to experience these attacks with this very faith they'll be able to show that they even in death and life they are faithful may your blessing be upon your children your sons and daughters may healing come as a water and may it come upon your people in these last days we continue to wait for the movement of your word, the action of your word that will come in the power of your spirit and will wipe out all impurity and will cleanse your threshing floor and you will gather your wheat into the barn and the chaff will be burned by your fire. We thank you, Lord, that you have placed your axe to the root that brings no fruit, that bears no fruit 
to uh, to cut it down so that it not take the place of what needs to receive. May your garden be blessed before your face that bears fruit to you. May we will thank you, Father, for knowing your faith. We thank you that you are our Lord. We thank you that you have given us the Holy Spirit, that you have given us your words, and we worship before your word, your great and powerful words, your eternal words, our great God, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now all of us together, let us proclaim our unchanging manifestation. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To God, our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen.